Are you old enough to remember the mini bike craze in the late 60s and early 70s? I was really caught up in that craze when I was in the eighth grade in Midland, Texas. When I wasn't dreaming about riding the trails on my mini bike, I was arguing with my mom about letting me have one. Her heels were dug in. She was not going to let me kill myself on a motorcycle. But I was determined to wear her down. It took more than a year of heated arguing. But one day, she picked me up from school. I pointed to a mini bike in the parking lot, and she asked me, Is that the one you want? I was kind of stunned that she was even interested enough to ask. I told her, No, I wanted the Honda Trail 70. She then said, well, let's go down to the Honda shop and get you one. Without question, it was the happiest day of my youth. An hour later, we were loading my brand new metallic blue 1969 Honda Trail 70 into the trunk of her car. Yeah, cars had trunks that big back then. <laughs> I don't even remember how we got it out of the trunk when we got home. It's hard to believe that the only photos I have of that bike are some black and white Polaroids. Oh, and the pinstripes? I added those in hopes of getting some more horsepower out of that little bike. That 1969 CT70 is where my love of riding on two wheels started. I was only 14 years old. And 45 years later, I was determined to try and recreate that same feeling by restoring a 1969 Trail 70. And today, I'm going to tell you that story. Hey everyone, I'm Cruise Man, and today I'm going to do a little something a little different. I'm going to take you on a short journey down memory lane, which started back in, I think it was 2006 or 2007. I can't wait to get this show started, but before I do, I want to remind you that this is a channel for anyone with a passion for motorcycles. And yes, I'm including Can-Am Spider and Goldwing trike riders in that group. If you love to ride, you're in the right place. And if you've not done so already, I want to invite you to join this community by subscribing to this channel. It's completely free. Just click the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so that you can tell YouTube to notify you when we come out with new videos. Okay, business out of the way. Let's start the show. I started riding again in 2005, and for the previous few years, I'd been watching a lot of motorcycle restoration shows on television, and I got inspired to try my hand at restoring a motorcycle. I should emphasize that I've never restored anything while I have basic mechanical skills, at this point I had never disassembled, much less reassembled a motorcycle. All I had was some determination and a desire to bring that 1969 Honda Trail 70 back to life. My first task was to find a used Trail 70 locally. I looked on eBay for a few weeks, never found a decent 1969 model. My criteria was that the bike had to have a clean title had to have at least be able to start and run. And the closest thing I could find was a 1972 Trail 70, which was about 35 miles from home. The bike was in pretty rough shape, but it would start and it had a title. After I got the bike home, I started to document my initial inspection, which revealed a lot of rust. The bike was mostly intact, but every piece and part was going to need to be touched to bring it back to showroom condition. The front forks were straight, but the surfaces had some pitting from rust. The chain was completely toast and have to be replaced. The headlight ears were badly damaged, a pretty common problem, and they were rusted, as were the shock covers and even the main frame. Originally, the bike was a yellowish gold, my least favorite color, so I knew that would have to be changed. The seat cover was torn and there was rust on the underside of the seat pan. Now, the engine would start and it would run, but very poorly. At very least, it would need a car rebuild, and perhaps more. 
The chrome muffler heat shield was badly damaged and the muffler underneath was covered in rust. It took me about 10 days to disassemble the bike and I recorded and cataloged every nut and bolt, taking photos of each one as I went along and recording them in a notebook. I then put each part in a labeled Ziploc bag. I did not do all this in hopes of making a video someday, I just wanted to make sure I could get the bike back together. Fortunately, I was able to get all of the parts off the bike without the need of a torch to heat up any frozen bolts. I wanted to keep as many original parts as possible, so I started hand cleaning every bolt with a wire brush wheel on a bench grinder. I used that wire wheel to clean off all of the surface rust on the fork tubes, the triple trees, and all the other metal parts. To try and replicate the brush look of the original front forks, I used a Scotch-Brite pad. Now, there were many parts that needed to be replaced. Some original new old stock or NOS parts were available on eBay, but unfortunately many were not. The headlight ears were beyond saving. I did locate a couple on eBay that were in better condition, still damaged, but not perfect. I found a guy online who restored Trail 70s and he had some way of repairing those headlight ears. So I shipped mine off to him and they came back in perfect condition. I did find a new old stock muffler guard and a brand new speedometer. The seat cover and foam had to be replaced. I spent three or four days just restoring the seat pan. I was able to find aftermarket seat foam and a seat cover with the Honda logo on the rear of the seat. If you've ever had to replace a seat cover, I learned a little trick. Let the seat cover and the seat warm up in the sun before trying to stretch it over the foam. The internal components of the engine were just beyond my skills. I was able to locate a man in Virginia who specialized in rebuilding Trail 70 engines. I think he was in Virginia, I'm not sure about that. He did a complete valve job so that the engine would run on ethanol fuel. He cleaned up the pistons, the rings, and cylinder walls. He replaced the carb with a newer version. He even repainted the engine cylinders, and when I got it back, it looked like a brand new engine. I think I paid $800 just to have the engine rebuilt. I took all of the chrome parts to a local chrome shop to be re-chromed, and I also took many of the original bolts to be replated. I was told that those parts would be ready in two weeks, and six weeks later I finally got the chrome parts back. The rear shocks were in pretty bad shape. The chrome on the springs was really pitted and rusted, so I had to purchase a shock compressor so that I could take the shocks apart and get the springs out so they could be re-chromed. Not an easy job, but it did allow me to clean up the shocks, but I was able to retain the original shocks. The engine guard handlebars and this little chrome, kind of a spark plug cover protector had to be sent out to the chrome shop. I was able to find some brand new NOS chrome fenders on eBay and I bought those new. There are only two chrome shops within 100 miles of my house and I've used both of them and neither one were reliable. I did find a painter in Arlington to repaint the frame, the shock covers, the chain guard, and the front fork tube covers. I was able to have him match the original Honda Red used in the early Trail 70s from a red NOS chain cover I'd found on eBay, and I think he did an excellent job. There are reproduction stickers available online, so I bought a complete set. Now I do have the original VIN tag, but at the time I did a pretty poor job of removing mine before the frame went to paint. I could have done a better job of removing the rivets. I still have not reattached the VIN plate, but I do have it in a Ziploc bag. Any of the parts on the bike that were painted black, I did myself. Here I've stripped the foot pegs using that wire wheel on the bench grinder. Here you got the kickstand and the headlight bucket, and this is what the kickstand looked like after I'd painted it with the gloss black paint. Now this is the foot peg and kickstand mounting bracket. You can see what it looks like when it came off of the bike. And here's what the foot pegs and that bracket look like after I've primed them. 
Then after a couple of coats of gloss black paint plus a couple of coats of clear, this is what those parts ended up looking like. Now here's the chain cover, which I basically just shot with primer because the painter was going to paint it to match the bike. Duplicolor makes a silver metallic paint that almost perfectly matches what Honda uses from the factory. And I used that on the hubs and on the engine covers to almost perfectly match the Honda OEM. I also painted all of the wheel rims. Here they're primed, and this is what they looked like after they were completed with paint. I spent many, many hours hand polishing these drum brake, I guess you call them hubs. The one on the left is finished, and the one on the right is what it looks like before I started. It took me about a week to reassemble the bike, and I bought a brand new set of tires and tubes. Amazingly, they still make tires for these bikes. The wheels are a unique design in that they are in two halves. This was really a brilliant design by Honda because it makes it very easy to change or patch an inner tube without having to pry a tire off of a rim. You simply remove the wheel, use a wrench or a socket to take the rim apart, and you have access to the inner tube. It's really brilliant. Now, once I had the bike all back together, I couldn't wait to fire up the engine and ride it around the block a few times. It started on the third kick. I'm pleased with how the restoration turned out. I've kept the bike in my garage or my office since the restoration. Even won an award in Fort Worth at a bike show. Try to start it up at least once a year and let it run, and I change the oil every year. It's probably time for me to go through it and change the tires too. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So how much did all this cost? Well, I paid $1,100 for the bike, which is about double what I should have paid. I've seen Trail 70s in better condition for under $1,000. I paid $800 for the engine rebuild, another $750 on paint, and another $700 on chrome plating. And then there's all the NOS parts I bought, which were well over $900. I easily have $4,200 in this project, not including the tools, paint, miscellaneous parts, not to mention my time. I now keep her in the garage as a constant reminder of the past and where my love of riding began. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and share the video with your friends. About a year after this restoration, I decided to restore a 1975 Honda CL360. So if you'd like me to make a video about that ordeal, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching.